But even more so uh, is for the students I have coming through here who are not naturally careful with machines and don't understand how deadly they are. Now I've got a, a range of shop built um, push sticks and, and uh, jigs and so on to help keep my fingers on my hand and stop bleeding on the machine. But uh, there's also a range of ready made ones which are worth knowing about and we'll have a look at some of those now. Eh? Now, whenever you're using machines, it's really important that you have the push sticks or whatever safety device you're going to have at hand. I mean, at hand, so that you're not hunting around for them in the middle of the show. So, you know, as I have these right here when I'm using it, I start pushing through. These are pretty good ones. Grippy bottom. I push through with these ones. You know that I went through with that, that I can bring as I'm keeping the pressure on the cutter, and then I can go behind with that. And then the tail end, picking this one up, and ready to go. Now, the advantage of this one I've used at the tail end is that I've attached this little pusher on the back to give it, to glued on a bit of ply, to give it extra security at the back. So as well as the grippy pad, I'm being extra sure, because that's what I like to be, uh, and giving a push from behind. These are comfy ones to use. Uh, I have the handmade ones, you know, the shed made ones of course, but there are a variety of these which we'll have a look at. Here's a, another version of the sticky pad and the good grippy offset handle with the benefit of a little bit of pressure on the face there to give you more of a sense of having your hands enclosed. It's a nice feeling and that can bump against the fence and so on nice and smoothly rather than your hand going against it. When you need to machine a smaller piece of wood, a push stick like this is just a bit awkward to use. So that's when you find one of these very handy. It's offset, it gets a good grip and the push of the stick. When it's, you know, I'm working with a longer piece, I have these two things that I've made up here in the shed. Uh, sandpaper on the bottom for a grip so I can hold the front down and keep my hands well clear of it. Or here's an even skinnier one for that kind of work. So, skinnier work, we have a dedicated stick. Very handy. By the way, if you've noticed this and wondered about it, it's a little amendment I put on because I don't like a fence, I want to have my safety yard on the time, I don't like it sticking out the side. So I came up with this tambour so it keeps it totally covered no matter where it is and doesn't get in my way as I go through. I can't pretend that I'm a favour of those guards that you have to feed underneath because just where I want the pressure on top of the wood, I've got the guard in the way. So this is my version of keeping myself safe. Now these uh, main switch feather boards are something that I took to immediately they happen and they're certainly not something that I can make here in the shed. You can see just one of the uses on them here, uh, as well as having the cover over the the blade, and I add this to that. I can support this, lock this firmly against the fence, so because obviously I don't want that slipping down or lifting. 
So having the featherboard that does both locks in both positions is terrific. So when I want to cut accurate mitres or even uh, other angles, I can use this to do so. This is also handy too with the, the smaller bits of wood like this. We can do it with the fence up and work it like that as well if needs be. But I certainly use this, which I show you on the table saw. I'll show you that in a moment. Another place where this main switch comes into its own is on ripping with the smaller pieces. I can secure it against the fence and on the table and keep it very securely so it doesn't vibrate or wobble and feed it past the saw. Uh, well, safely. Let me catch it on the saw now. So I can feed it past the saw safely with it. I'm keeping well clear of it, we like that. I've got my guard pushed out of the way here for demonstration purposes, of course. Uh, but going through there, and once it's cut, then it's cut. I've got pushed it from behind to take it all through, by the way. So that goes all the way through, and then I can clear it at the back when it comes. Once it's cut, it falls clear. use the band saw for ripping, it's handy for um, wider boards and so on, but also it uses less material. And so when I've got to cut a skinny strip like I've done here, it's very easy to do that on the band saw. And having these mag switches steadying the work as it goes through against the fence gives me a nice clean cut. I could extend the fence, but instead I have another feather board out the back that is supported on the way through. But going through here, knowing that it's not going to wobble at all, thanks to the feather board, allows me to concentrate on just pushing it through, rather than worrying about it flapping around. And for cutting a series of skinny bits like this, that's a very handy technique. And I can see what's going on. And the bandsaw, the bandsaw blade that I have in here gives a very clean finish too. Nice but precious material when I'm losing one and a half mils of material rather than three or four inch cut. And another uh, use of the magnet, this is a rockler push stick, which is very handy here. It's got a magnet built in, and so it's right there to hand when I want to use it up nice and close. Uh, I like a long push stick in most cases, but here the short one is quite sufficient to get it through there. Magnet being always there or living on the table, but right where I want it ready to use. curves and I like to make my own veneers or facings because if you lay two and a half to three mil pretty wood on top of ply it's very stable and durable much more than the regular uh, pre-cut veneers and the band saw is ideal for that particularly with a good blade but keeping my fingers away from it and keeping the workpiece stable this mag switch is ideal this stack of feather boards hold it very firmly against the, the fence as it's being cut. And for the last bit, I can just grab my 
pushed it and pushed the last little bit through. So very stable cutting which you need for cutting on a width because any sort of rocking as it goes past the fence will waste wood basically. But as you can see when it's properly cut, uh, properly supported, you can get a lovely consistent finish off those. Make it switch again with the stacker. Okay, this gripper is a pretty fancy bit of gear. It's got all sorts of settings and adjustments on it. Now, or configurations. One that's uh, pretty handy is the ability to hold down both the piece that you want to cut and the piece you want to keep. By going over the top of the saw, the saw runs through the middle and the small piece, in this case, that you want to support or that you want to stop flying around, as you go through, that piece is carried through rather than risking it firing back. It's securely held so you get a clean cut off it. Uh, the bottom of this has got a good grip on it. It has various adjustments. You can move this back and forth to accommodate the uh, different widths. It has another fence to set it out yonder. You can even put a piece that goes down onto the table and supports this side to keep it all tracking through. Just a matter of setting it up for the cut. So I'll give you a demo of pushing this one through now. I'll work with a small piece because if you have a long piece, you're gonna to need to have two of them so you can leapfrog. But if I'm working with a small piece, this one will do okay. You'll see what I mean. So I can keep the weight on both sides of the workpiece stably all the way through. Now, this one here has another use at the router table, especially something like this pattern following purpose, because I can have a good grip on the workpiece and make sure I'm not gonna bump into the cutter as I'm going on. And of course, I don't get the stuff spitting in my face. I'm not using it turned on at the moment, but you can see the action. I can run against the bearing and do the cutting and have a really firm grip on the workpiece. Normally, I might be doing this kind of thing by hand, so being able to do it with a grip and the protection on top is pretty nice. So a handy device for this purpose. Now at the router table, it's very important that the workpiece is held securely and your fingers are kept away from cutting. So featherboards serve both those purposes. In the past, I had my shed made ones and just held those in place with a clamp. They worked okay but it's much more convenient to have these ready-made ones have a track in the fence that I've built. Uh, they're just regularly in position. They do the same job, hold it securely, they're easily adjustable. So yes, I'm very happy to have these feather boards here too, which hold the workpiece down securely. It's uh, good to be totally relaxed about your woodwork, as long as you feel safe. Like, you'll notice that the saw's not on. But it's no joking matter. Safety in woodwork is absolutely critical and that's how you can be relaxed. So whether you are using a store-bought or a shed-made push stick and there's a huge range to choose from, you need to have them to hand all the time. Woodwork can be fun as long as it's safe and when you're relaxed you're getting all the pleasure out of it. So take good care of yourselves, eh? I was talking about this in issue 28 of Australian Wood Review all that time ago. And then in issue 90, coming back, we'll be talking about it again, but this time with the scoreboard version. So get the copy, read up on safety, and practice it. You don't want to go losing bits of your body now, do you? Nor getting blood on the machines, of course. Take care.